Hi, I'm Michelle Chalfant, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shelfont, where we talk all about how to live as emotionally healthy adults. <laughs> where was this podcast when I was growing up? That's what I'd like to know. We've got a great guest today. We've got Melanie Tanya Evans on the show talking about thriving after a narcissistic relationship and or narcissistic abuse. Yeah, we had a really incredible conversation. She talks a lot about going from the old model, which was survivor recovery to thriver status. And she's got an incredible model. And actually she put me through her model, which was fun and powerful, I have to say. It was really, really powerful. Well, we're going to talk all about narcissism and really the dynamics of a narcissistic relationship, how Melanie discovered really that she was in a narcissistic relationship. She did not even know. She had no idea. And she ended up having a breakdown and then had a big wake up call that showed her the experience really was for her own healing. So she talks all about that on the show today. She also talked about why it's so hard to leave a narcissist, how to heal from narcissistic abuse in your inner world. That's so important, you guys. It's not about the outer world. It's like, we got to heal our inner world when it comes to any kind of emotional healing. We have to go inside. She talks about how we do that. And also next steps when leaving a relationship with a narcissist and the difference between a survivor and thriver. And lastly, the number one mistake people make when trying to recover from narcissistic abuse. It's a jam packed show as always. I had lots and lots of questions for her and it was just a great conversation. So let me just share with you one quick thing talking about emotionally healthy adults. We've got our final adult chair intensive. It's a live workshop that we're doing in Nashville, Tennessee, November 3rd through 5th. So please come join us. We'd love to have you. If you want to take a deep dive into this model, the child, the adolescent, and the adult, this is your last time. I got to tell you, we are changing things up for 2023. So this is the last adult chair three-day workshop that we'll be doing, and we'd love to see you. So head on over to theadultchair.com forward slash Nashville and join us for just an incredibly power powerful experiential three days. We do a lot of work in there. You learn a ton and you're going to end up doing a lot of work, I got to tell you. If you want, you know, we always have some people that just want to kind of sit on the outsides, but you still benefit because when you watch other people do their work, holy moly, it changes all of us just witnessing others do their personal work. So it's such a great three days. We'd love to have you at theadultchair.com forward slash Nashville, November 3rd through 5th. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit about Melanie Tanya Evans. She is a global narcissistic abuse recovery expert and the creator of the Quanta Freedom Healing Method and the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, NARP. Melanie's leading edge healing methods have helped thousands of people make astounding full recoveries from toxic relationship abuse. Her work has now touched the lives of over 15 million people from more than 130 countries worldwide, and her, and her abuse recovery system is recommended by doctors, psychologists, therapists, and renowned relationship experts from all over the world. 
Melanie's work is revolutionizing the old model of survivor recovery to one of thriver status. The online content Melanie offers on abuse recovery reaches close to 8 million people monthly across her numerous platforms, and her reach continues to grow exponentially. In 2018, Melanie released her first book, You Can Thrive After Narcissistic Abuse, the number one system for recovering from toxic relationships, which became an Amazon bestseller in days. Here we go with Melanie Tanya Evans. So welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast, Melanie Tanya Evans. Hello, Michelle. It's awesome to be on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting up early because I know you're all the way in Australia. So I appreciate you getting up early and being with us today. Very nice. Fine. <laughs> in your warm sweater. <laughs> in the winter. Yes, it's cool here. Not where you are, but no, uh, not here it is. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you on. I've had um, many, a variety of guests on to talk about narcissism and you have some beautiful work that you've done with narcissism. So first of all, thank you for what you're doing in the world, but I want to dive in and okay. ask, how did you even come upon this work? What was the draw? Tell me a little bit about you. Well, Michelle, I had no idea I was going to grow up and become a global narcissistic abuse recovery expert. I kind of fell into it and I, it chose me more than I chose it because, I mean, my story was I married a narcissist. Mm. And at that point in my life, I had no idea what a narcissist was. I'd been into spiritual and personal development for years. And I thought I'd done all of this amazing work on myself. And I really thought, oh my gosh, this is it. I finally met the man of my dreams. And what unfolded really shocked me because I'd never come across the things that I was confronted with. And what really uh, scared me the most was how I started tolerating behavior that I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be tolerating. Mm. And I felt so addicted and so hooked into this person that I, I really literally became like a, a drug addict. I'd break up with him. I'd break no contact. I was lying to people in my life that I was seeing him. And this went on for years and years until I ended up having a complete psychotic adrenal breakdown which was another thing that really shocked me because I'd always had robust health. I could always get up and get on with it. And I, mm -hmm. I was kind of like that type A personality who could make my life work. And I found myself with a diagnosis where doctors said to me that I would need three antipsychotics to even be able to function, that I would never again function as normal. And I was also told that I would possibly need to be institutionalized to recover and when they said, you will never be able to be who you were before this happened to you, I really, Michelle, thought it was game over. I wow. thought my, and at that point in my life, I'd lost everything. I'd lost all of the money that I brought into the relationship. Mm. You know, I'd been really successful as a single woman. I lost all of that. I had piles of debt. I'd lost my work. I'd been smeared to the entire community. Family mm -hmm. and friends have turned mm -hmm. against me. Mm -hmm. The police were abusing me by proxy. I was looking at losing um, the real estate option on the place that I was staying in. And it really couldn't get any worse than that. And in amongst all of that, I was still craving him, even with the, the, the unspeakable things that had happened which I don't really need to go into, but we're, you know, we're going to talk about narcissism and people are going to relate anyway. Yeah. So when I had this breakdown, I, I, I knew I'm not good with Panadol. I'm not good with aspirin. So I really knew that antipsychotics was going to be the end of the road for me. So I absolutely started contemplating how to take my own life because I really believed that that was my only way out. And also my young son at the time, I thought he's better off without me um, because I'm so broken. So I was seriously 
uh, trying to work out how to do that. And this voice in my head kept saying to me, no, there's another way. And I was arguing with this voice in my head and I thought it's my madness speaking. So I ended up, I walked into my bathroom, I hit my bathroom mat and I, I put my hands up and I just screamed. I always had believed in a higher power and I just screamed, help me, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And in that moment, I had this lightning clarity that was so powerful. And maybe, and Michelle, I realized from that experience, maybe sometimes we've got to be out of our mind to get the truth. Mm-hmm. And the truth was so real and embodied. And this voice was speaking to me and it said to me, this has actually happened for you and not to you. And this person in your life has been smashing all the parts of you that you haven't realized were unconscious that you needed to heal. And you can heal this from the inside out. And this stunned me because I'd been doing years of personal development for, for forever. Anyway, I got catapulted into this vision in the future where I saw and felt myself healed and whole and connected to source in a way that I'd never felt even before abuse. Mm. And I experienced this future experience and the voice said, this is you in the future if you choose this mission. And then I got catapulted back to my emaciated because I was 80 pounds I hadn't been able to eat for six months. I hadn't had an hour's sleep a night for gosh knows how long. I shook, I sweated, my hair had fallen out. I was an emaciated skeleton. And I got catapulted back into that body. That hadn't changed. But what had changed was this offer on the table by something much higher than me, which said, you can leave if you want, or you can choose this. I chose it. And from that moment on, it became not about him. It became about me. I had my mobile phone, my cell phone. I threw it in the bin. Um, mm. The garbage was getting picked up the next morning. And, and that was the way we'd still been in contact. That was done and gone. Mm-hmm. And I was still a mess, but I, I just knew there was a way. So the next day when I was with the, the, the t- medical team that were going to start my diagnosis, I talked my way out of antipsychotics, which was in itself a miracle. Mm. And then that started an 18 month journey of medication free, where I literally for the first time ever self partnered and I came within and I loved and healed myself back to wholeness but on that, on that trip, I discovered quantum inner energetic tools and then eventually quantum freedom healing. And then I started sharing my experiences with the world. And before I knew it, all of these people were saying to me, you, have you been in my living room? Have you been in my kitchen? Have you been in my bedroom? Like, because I thought this had just happened to me. And then I researched narcissism and I, and, and anyway, the whole thing exploded. So yeah, it, it chose me, Michelle. Wow. What a story. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's powerful. I love when you said, um, I self-partnered talk about that a little bit. Cause that yeah. was, that is what you needed to do to kind of, to walk your way out of this relationship yeah. or when did the relationship end? Well, the relationship, uh, well, it had already ended and I was just in the battle of breaking mm. the contact. I was already living separated from him, but from that moment on the self partnering was, you see, one of the hugest realizations I had in that uh, epiphany moment was that he was treating me identically to how I'd been treating myself. I was my own worst critic. I was my own conditional lover. Melanie, you're not, I can't even like you, let alone love you if you haven't lost 10 pounds, if you haven't ticked off everything on your to-do list, Mm -hmm. if you haven't got that level of love and approval from somebody else outside of yourself. So, and here I had this, because I used to scream to him things like, you know, you don't even know me when he would accuse me of all these horrible things, the things he was doing. Mm -hmm. And there, in my epiphany, I was like, 
Have you ever sat and been with yourself? Have you turned inwards to your inner being? Have you ever held and self-soothed and really been your own lover, supporter and barricade in life? But after that epiphany, what happened was I threw my, my cell phone in the bin and I ran myself a bath and I was shaking and sweating and emaciated. And I got in the bath and I, I hugged myself and I visualized my inner child mm. and I visualized picking her up. And I said, you know, every time I talk about this, I get emotional, mm. you know, oh. like it was yesterday mm -hmm. because it was so beautiful. And <laughs> just let me gather. But I said to her, and I saw her emaciated, broken, and destroyed. And I held her and I said to her, little one, I am never leaving you again. Mm. And I'm going to do everything I can to love and heal you back. And I'm so sorry I left. And I'm so sorry that I tried to get everybody else to love you. And I'm so sorry I smoked and I drank and I did all sorts of things to try to stop you screaming mm. I'm here I love you I'm not leaving and it was that moment Michelle I felt love for the first time in my life mm. that is powerful and inner child work is some of, some of my favorite because it's so powerful so thank you for sharing that I love that what a You're story welcome. what a story wow so how does, how would someone know if they're in a narcissistic relationship? You know, what I heard you say was, you know, you were, you were, hel I'm guessing you were, you thought you were such a healthy person, right? So, and I sit and wonder, yeah. you know, do healthy people stumble into narcissistic relationships or on some level, are we unhealthy and we're attracting these people? Like, I guess I just asked you two questions. I'm sorry about that, but like, what can a healthy person be attracted to a narcissist? And then how in the heck do we know that we're in this relationship? Two questions. Okay. They're perfect questions. And I think my answer might cover all of it. I hope, mm -hmm. you know, look, our normal is our normal because it's who we're being and we don't know any different. Mm -hmm. I really did think I was healthy. Now I know, and it's not ever our fault. You know, I know that I was unconscious. I know I wasn't self-partnered. I know I was still codependent. I know I was still seeking somebody else to complete me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a healthy boundary function. I didn't have the ability to anchor into my values and my truths and live in an inner standing of them. I had plenty of understanding from the chin up, but I wasn't standing in who I was. And how that really played out was and it happens with virtually everybody that runs into narcissist our inner intuition goes off mm -hmm. so you know they're all bright and shiny and a narcissist will come into your life and they protect they're very very astute at working out intuitively and intellectually and through question asking what hurts within you and what's missing what mm -hmm. you're seeking so that they can purport to be your savior so they'll do this in a friendship they'll do it in a business deal they will do it in a love relationship so you know he was able to work out very quickly that I didn't, I'd had experiences in my past where I hadn't felt trusted by partners. I'd been accused of all sorts of things. They didn't know who I was. So, you know, he purported that he was a very secure in a person that he could grant freedom and trust and he'd always trust his mm. partners. And, you know, so I thought, oh my God, not only are you attractive and spiritual, you're exactly what I'm looking for. Mm. But what the truth was, I still felt this inner, like the first time I met him, my inner gut squirmed. And it felt yuck. And then into the relationship, you know, he was love bombing and granting me so much attention and dinners and beautiful outings and whining and dining and all the rest of it. But there were things that were off. There were things that he would say. There was things that he would do. You know, I remember once I'm on the phone early on, I'm, I'm on the phone to a girlfriend and I'm calling her honey. 
and I get off the phone and he looks at me with this look that could kill and he goes that word is only for me I thought he was joking wow and he and he wasn't and then there were people coming into my life that knew him that were warning me of things or he would tell me a story and then he would repeat the story and it would have different circumstances in it and I thought hang on I was there for the first version now it's changed narcissists are terrible liars because they're living this fantasy life that they're making up in their head and if you're going to be that kind of person you have to have a really good memory and they just change the narrative to suit their purpose so all of this was going on around me and then I'm just like oh it's okay he's just trying to impress me or it's all right. I'll be able to handle it. All this ex that's showing up. No, she is the crazy one, you know. And so we justify all of these things away and away and away and away and away and away. And to the point where, like even as we were about to get married, I discovered he was still already married. Oh, my gosh. And didn't even have a divorce yet. Oh my I gosh. could go on with an another 10 examples that are just yeah. shocking right yeah. yeah okay okay so here it was because I because I hadn't made of my own soul and become whole within myself somebody else showing up in my life pretending to be that wholeness to grant me myself I clung so desperately to that because, oh my gosh, this is the only chance of my one and only, and this is my, my one and only, and there'll never be another one and only. Mm -hmm. I justified away so many things rather than knowing I am at my own soulmate <laughs> and these are my truths and these are my values. And I didn't know how to, to speak up, confront, ask the difficult questions, lay boundaries and demand accountability, which now I do. That's good really good what you just said there. I like that a lot. Ooh. So I'm also hearing you say that you just really turned away from all the red flags. There were flags going up all over the place and you sort of just did one of these, right? Turned away. Absolutely. I didn't want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you know, he was so gorgeous in so many ways, mm -hmm. I, you know, off and on which is very much the narcissistic thing. And then people in my life, you know, until the obvious happened, but they loved him. They thought he was amazing and perfect. And, but that's normal. This is what goes on. It's very consistent. And I think it's such a trap. But you doubt yourself. You totally. Doubt yourself. And that's yeah. what's so hard because everyone around you is saying, oh, he's wonderful. He's gorgeous. He treats you so well. He's the nicest guy, whatever. And what I and he heard... was granting them so much support and he was helping them with things and he was there for them and you know and they're very very good at getting a peripheral set up to really believe that they are fabulous because yes. when the de the devaluing and discarding happens and it's happened before you are the one who is going to look like the defective damage crazy one yep yep they know what they're doing. They do. And what's yeah. interesting is so many people that I've worked with say, I'm too embarrassed to leave. They're going to think I'm crazy because he's so good. He's Correct. So good. Everyone in my community, in my town, you know, I work with him and, and everybody knows him and they think he's wonderful. I'm going to look like an idiot if I leave. How would Correct. somebody overcome that? And they're like embarrassed. And, and you know, what happens how much of the time when the person leaves, the narcissist does go after the person that leaves. And I mean, it's not pretty. So there's got to exactly. be a, a sense of like inner, the inner strength and empowerment in order to mm -hmm. leave. But how do you overcome all of these things? Because you have the whole town against you when, when you think about you, leaving and then you do leave. So how do you overcome that? Yeah, you're right, Michelle, because what happens is when the narcissist, because the narcissist is a black and white individual, you're either serving mm -hmm. the false self where you're amazing. Yep. And if you want to get away or you're not, well, then you are absolute trash. And they need to 
they need to devalue you and smear you in everybody else's eyes to be able to validate the narrative of the false self and to vindicate themselves. So they will smear you to all and sundry and all and sundry they've already set up in a way around you for them to start doubting you and think that they are so amazing. Mm -hmm. So the smear campaigns are beyond crippling Mm -hmm. and they're very powerful and a lot of good people fall for them. Like we can say we're flying monkeys and these people are, but the problem is good people are not used to people, adults looking them straight in the eyes with intense detail Mm -hmm. that they, they think, people aren't capable of lying like that narcissists are so Mm. very good people believe them they don't want to but they do Mm -hmm. so you are going to get smeared and set upon now I will say what it thank goodness is that we have communities such as ours you know our thriver community Mm -hmm. where all of this can get normalized for you because we've all been through it and everybody kind of like and we do have a direct path to heal from this which is so supportive and so powerful because then you don't have to feel alone because if you can't access things like that of course you are going to feel alone eaten by wolves Mm -hmm. literally so okay so the support yes. you need support for sure from people probably oh. outside of your community because they're not going to get it if you're inside the community that's right yeah no and people that have never been through narcissistic abuse can't even fathom or support what you're going through because they can't even get it they don't none get of it. us could before it happened to us we just couldn't and the victim often looks like the perpetrator mm-hmm. that really is what happens because you go crazy mm-hmm. and you look crazy and the narcissist uses that against you. Okay, so how do we, it's the inner work, Michelle, because mm-hmm. the things that a narcissist does are unfathomable and they are things that we just can't logically rationalize and put away. And sadly, a lot of people never recover or they end up like I did, which you you just end up breaking mm. because you can't you can't just think, and confront your way out of this by the time you're confronting and you're trying to stand up for yourself you look more guilty it just gets worse and worse for you and the narcissist uses your angst and your trauma as the bullets to keep shooting you with it's like blood to a shark Mm. so you have to detach you have to pull back you have to be able to let go of what's happening on outside of you and really powerfully self-partner and address what's going on inside of you those triggered traumas and what I love about the quantum inner work and specifically quantum freedom healing which is the tool that I created that saved my life Mm -hmm. is we've got the ability to load up those traumas release them and replace them with literally that higher power our super conscious our higher self you could call it god you could call it source you could call it universe call it creation but it is the light that has the ability to heal what we can't and when the trauma leaves and the light comes into that place literally embodied within you you get a shift and when you get a shift in your emotional somatic self your brain neurons will literally shift to reflect it so the obsessing traumatized stinking thinking the analysis paralysis starts to melt away and the reset that comes in is that is is peace and space and personal power and solution and then what happens is is the outer environment and it's quantum law so within so without starts to reflect that shift and what starts coming towards you is solution the right people the right opportunities And even those that were buying into the narcissistic BS Mm. literally start re-coming into your environment and they wake up to the truth. Wow. So this is- And we see it all the time. So this is your technique that you do with people? Yes. Your tools? Yes. Can you give us a demo or an example of it? Anything (laughs) at all? I don't know. Gosh, Michelle. Gosh, Michelle. I tell you what. uh, Yeah. uh, Okay. 
do you want it? Let's go, girl. I'm ready. Let me get. This. All right. <laughs> okay. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Let's, so Michelle, let's... what I want you to do is I need permission to come into your space. Yep. Come on in. Okay. Beautiful. Cause all right. Oh, gorgeous. All right. Now what I'm just going to do is a soul balance, which starts off the healing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in this time that I can't really discuss and explain. We're just yeah. going to go through it together. That's okay. Sure. Now, what I want you to do, Michelle, I want you to think of something that's triggering you or it's in your claw or it's just something that's, you know, on your heart or on your mind. All right. Have you got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to come into your body and we're going to set the intention that this thing, some that there's a trauma in your body that represents that somewhere in your body is going to light up. So Michelle, it's going to feel like a dense energy or an anxiety. Where do you feel it? Um, it's like a line from the right side of my stomach, like my belly button, all the way up to here, up to my Perfect. chest. Yeah, right here. It's a line. I want you to stay in your body and just breathe. And I just want you to roll your shoulders back and open up a bit of space in your heart and in your chest. And I want you to be with it in your body. And now what I want you to do, I just want you to connect to it. And I just want you to allow your imagination, your intuition to give you a visual on this trauma. So like color or space or density of it. Okay. And you don't need to share it. Just do that for a moment. Okay. And keep breathing, keep breathing and keep your body open. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to feel the intensity of it in your body. So one out of 10 means I barely feel it. 10 out of 10 means it's huge. I want you to feel it like a cut on your leg as intensely as you can and give me a rating out of 10. About a four. Okay, beautiful. Now, what I want you to do is just breathe. All right. And I'm going to start loading it up. Now you just be, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in there, just close your eyes and just stay in your body. We're going to put in there the pain, the shock, the fear, the burden, the trauma, the grief, the anxiety, and any other emotion that goes with that. What we're actually doing is we're loading up your pain body, which is the stuff that's the closest to the surface that we usually know about consciously. All right. And now we're going to put in there any past life situations events occurrences attachments we're going back into your timeline so anywhere where this trauma has been set up and been in repeat in your life we're loading it up just breathe have your body open sometimes michelle the feeling of the intensity when we open up and load up can get a lot stronger just be all right and what we're going to do is we're going to put in there the Okay, we just finished. All right, we're going to put in there any of the genetic material that's come through from your ancestors where you have genetically picked up this same trauma, these same beliefs and limiting beliefs that they've held and passed on to you genetically. Just breathe. And we've got it. We've got a fair bit of energy on every level so far. All right, we're loaded and we're going to put in there the multidimensional, interdimensional and future and parallel lifetime. So this is the quantum multiple selves. If we don't clear them, we don't get a true clearing. Just breathe. All right. So Michelle, we are loaded up. And now what we're going to do together, Michelle, I want you to imagine there's junk and stuff inside of you. We are going to release this out through the top of your head. We're going to send it off to source and creation. And as it leaves your body, it dissolves back to love and source for recycling, freeing your inner being. And we're going to do it together now. All right. Now, Michelle, I just want you to open up some space in your body. Just stay in your body. Just open up some space in your body and your heart. All right. And then just be, I do this part and we're going to bring down a you and all of this space, unconditional love and self-acceptance. And we're going to connect you up to the source healing and the resolution, which is the dissolving of this trauma back to native nothingness and back to space. 
That's another part of your subconscious that we're clearing because there's multiple compartments we need to clear. Mm. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the source code of truth on this, which is the returning of you back to you, your true self, your source self on this topic. All right. We've locked that in to the healing container. Now, Michelle, we're clearing another part of your subconscious. I want you to imagine you as a container and there's junk and stuff in there. Now, I want you to use any visualization tool that works for you to clean out the container, see the stuff dissolve back to native nothingness and space until you're clean, clear and open and tell me when you've done it. Done. All right. Now I want you to imagine. Flower started opening. Mm. Beautiful. I want you to imagine a pipeline that goes up to a big ball, B-A-L-L, my accent, of source light above you. And in this big ball of light is your divinity, is your source self reset on this topic back to your highest potential. See it as bright light, bring it down the pipeline like a woman having a drink. Fill up every cell of your body with this light. And I want you to see your inner being awakening and glowing that same light throughout you you feel with so much light your outline disappears and you burst Mm. into a ball of light Mm. tell me when that's done done all right now i'm going to speed this up because there's a fair bit left but all right just close your eyes i'm going to do this for you All right. All you have to do is breathe and be. And part of this process is if I do the shift for you, you don't even have to participate. All right. So what we've got, we've got standing in the distance, your inner child who was carrying this trauma and any other beings of your multidimensional self who need this healing. So they're coming up to you. And we've got angels coming in around and surrounding and they're clearing out their internal balls of trauma, releasing them up to source and they're dissolving back to native nothingness and back to space. So Michelle, just stay open and breathe and be. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to pour into them the light. Their inner beings are all awakening and shining the same light throughout them and they all fill with so much light that they burst into balls of expanded, extended source self light that just is. Mm. And then those beings are all coming inside of you so that you all integrate together into the one ball of light. And then the angels are coming in around and surrounding you and they're reaching inside your being and they're switching on your genes. The cells of your body open up, your DNA is activated, source is flowing through you as you even more brighter and you are glowing as a ball of extended light. And then we're extending that light out into your auric field All shadows and darkness disappear and the light goes out into the field and connects up with the light that is the field. There is only light and you step out into the light with any shadow part of yourself that was remaining of that trauma because that's not your true self. You just shed it off into the light. It dissolves back to love for recycling, freeing you to be the glow to be the light and with body open and breathing repeat after me Michelle I am the light I am the light the light I am the light I am it just is it just is it's all that is it's all that is And then just breathe, body open, and we're going to integrate that shift and we're going to bring it through all space, time and dimension, all past lives, parallel lives, future lives, this life right here, right now, as if you've always known it, we're going to bring it all in and we're going to integrate that. Michelle, take a couple of deep breaths. And I want you to go back to the trauma in your body. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel it. I want you to pick it up as much as you can and give it a rating out of 10 now. It just feels like the space now that was here is like a line is now empty. Like it doesn't even feel like it's there anymore. 
I want you to think about that thing that was on your, like on your heart, on your spirit. What, tell me how it feels now. When I try to call that memory up of that person, it's like a blank slate. It's like white. I don't even see it. (laughs) I don't see their face anymore. Wow. That was powerful. Let me just seal off this healing. All right. So we're going to seal off this healing and we're going to bring through this is an instant healing. You've received an instant healing. Your body knows how to retain this healing and it has retained this healing. And you now walk forward into the matrix of life with your beliefs and your emotions aligned with the integrity of yourself. Your will is divine will. It's all truth. The truth sets you free. And I'm up and out of your space. Oh, thank you. That was good. So that's how we heal the unhealable in our community <laughs> because you can't do it logically. No, you can't. it's too much. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot just to try to mentally understand and mentally move forward. You really need something else. This was really cool. Thank you. Very you cool. are so welcome. It was my pleasure. Thank you. It's very rarely I get a host ask for that. <laughs> yeah. Why not? In I'm up for it. I love it. I love the energy energy and energy healing. Like this is right up my alley. I love it. I think we have to learn. We have to learn how to integrate all of this into healing, you know, because I, I, I've been, like I said, I've been a therapist for so many years and just mentally playing ping pong, you know, is is, we need more than that. So I always integrated something else in my sessions and that's what would create the greatest healing. So thank you. And I'm, I love that you do that. And, you know, I discovered when, I mean, that's how my work exploded because people who I started seeing for quantum freedom healing, they had DV workers, they had psychologists, they had, and I had these psychologists and DV workers ringing me up and they're saying, what happened to my client? They've been Mm -hmm. stuck for 10 years and they've had one session with you and they've completely shifted. Wow. Oh my gosh. Fabulous. I love hearing that. Thank you. Mm. All right. So if I thank you for that, it was such a gift. Thank you. So if someone is realizing that, wow, this, I am in a narcissistic relationship, what do they do? Yeah. What are their next? Okay. Yeah. What should they do? Okay. It's always about detach and retreat because if you go in and you try to get accountability, you try to sort it, sort it out, you try, you're just feeding the bear. Mm -hmm. You're feeding the shark blood and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Carnage happens. You, and it's the hardest thing to do because you're actually physiologically addicted to this person through a peptide addiction, which is a whole nother story, Mm -hmm. but you will literally feel like a drug addict coming off crack. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest people, you know, and people around you think, well, you've left, you should be getting better. You'll get worse before you get better. But that's why you really need to reach out with deeper tools that can start supporting you and heal you very quickly otherwise you may turn to drugs you may try to get another lover to self-medicate and you'll run into another narcissist you may you know get a food addiction or an alcohol addiction or or really put yourself in danger and of course you're going to keep caving in and going back it is so common to break no contact literally dozens of times If you don't turn inward self partner. Mm. So I would say to you, the first thing is, is come in, come into my community. We can really help you, Mm -hmm. but um, do what I did with your inner child. Like go Mm. have a bath, hug yourself, Mm -hmm. turn inwards, visualize her or him. You know, if there's guys watching this and because men go through this too. Oh yeah. And just absolutely. And just say to yourself, I love you. I'm here. I'm going to find the way. I'm never leaving you again. I'm sorry that I keep returning you to somebody who keeps kicking you and harming you and hurting you, trying to be loved. It's my job to love you. I know no one's coming. I have to be that person and I'm going to learn how to. Mm. We have to. So Your inner important. being is screaming for you, screaming so for you, nobody else. So important. I love that. Um, what, and what is the difference between a survivor and a thriver? What a great question. 
Okay, well, the survivor is a normal paradigm where, you know, we get a bit of logical head therapy, no shifts on the inside. We don't heal from PTSD and agoraphobia and and uh, adrenal malfunction and fibromyalgia and all the other nasties that go with narcissistic abuse. And we get away from the person, but we've still got the stinking thinking and the obsession and the PTSD. And, you know, you're not going to be able to trust yourself, life and others, and your life's going to be diminished. And there's massive losses through narcissistic abuse, absolutely financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. So it really is a broken person who got away, who's never recovered, who's just trying to manage their symptoms and is never going to thrive thriver which i'm so passionate about is we actually thrive not despite what happened to us but literally because of what happened for us oh wow because because we were brought to our knees and the point of catharsis is i love what joe Dispenza once said Mm -hmm. is when life can no longer go on as normal when we can no longer carry on with our wounds and we're brought to our knees and our rock bottom and the only solution is make or break, it's evolve or dissolve, it's it's integrate or disintegrate. Yeah. And, w- yeah. and that's where we come to with narcissistic abuse. And, and what I am so passionate about and excited about is that I know that we are all meant to evolve and integrate. We are all meant to thrive. Mm. And we can use this massive breakdown experience in our life to finally turn inwards, self-partner, value and heal and love ourselves back to the wholeness that we've never been able to really access until now and Mm. unleash for ourselves a life far superior to the one even before abuse, and even if abuse is all we've ever known. And that's what happens in our community every minute of every single day is mm-hmm. people are breaking free into that. How, how, what would someone do, though, to become, if they're a victim of, of abuse, how do they become empowered? Yeah. Is it just partnering with the inner child or like what's, what would be the next step to do that? What I took you through, and I'm not going to make light of this, Michelle, There were two people in our, two lots of people in our community. The people that, you know, read my articles and they watch my videos and I put out a ton of content, you know, and really they're getting information and they're getting validation and they're getting relief, but they have to keep it up. They have to do that diet every single day because they're managing the wounds. The people that do quantum freedom healing, that literally do the narcissistic abuse recovery program, which they, that was one of the healings I just did with you, a very basic one. Yeah. It's a 10 step process. They literally don't even end up having to self-medicate every day with my stuff. They burst free to the narcissist is no longer their reality. They're empowered. They have boundary function. They no longer carry the fears of crap. I can be myself without the fears of cr- criticism, rejection, abandonment, and punishment. If you do that, well, the rubbish just took itself out. You're not my truth. Um, and they become a higher level of living than they ever have been. And they don't need to keep doing my materials. Mm, that's powerful. And um, what are some of the most common pitfalls that people make when trying to move beyond a narcissist or a toxic relationship? What's the, what is something common that people do? What are some things? The number one thing is continually researching narcissists. Mm. That is the number one thing because every moment that you spend outside of your self-partnering, self-healing is a moment when you are denying your own love and healing back to wholeness. But more than that, the more that you're focused on them, you are actually putting your soul and your energy and your power outside of you and a focus of somebody else. And it is just confirming for you I'm an abuse victim. I've got abuse symptoms. I need to join, you know, groups to Mm. manage my PTSD and narcissists are bad people and the world is filled with evil people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when we take our power back and our healing back, we come into the inner standing of, yes, I got what a narcissist was. And we say at the start of it, the 1090 rule, 
10% focus on researching them, 90% healing Mm -hmm. and self-focus and understanding and developing yourself is Mm -hmm. where it needs to be. Because then you just come to, yes, these people exist. Yes, they do. But the truth is, is I can be a generator of my own love, approval, survival and security in the world, regardless of what anybody else is or isn't doing. Mm, that's really that's true healing yeah yeah tell me about how your narcissistic abuse recovery program helps people recover from abuse and I know you've said a lot about it is there anything else though that you can share with someone that might be listening that that's interested yeah yeah look I definitely can so there's many components to it and it's 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 a very complete package but how it works is you get immediately The connection to the NARP Members Forum, which is a global forum, over 130 different countries are in there. Mm. And we have very, very seasoned recovery experts that are all about solution-based work, the inner work, as well as the practical application for everything because there's so much that goes with narcissistic abuse survival and separation so your things like parallel parenting rather than Mm co-parenting how to uh, appear in court we have specialists that help you with that so there's so much that goes with that but it's yeah and look at and yeah and the support and right there's so much that goes into this right Oh, it's head spinning. It's head yeah. spinning. And people yeah. people can't even begin to believe what is going to happen when you try to separate with a narcissist. And to take your power, your life, your soul and your sanity back, you need help. You need specialists that have done this work, that mm-hmm. have succeeded and thrived so mm-hmm. that you don't have to be Robinson Crusoe trying to work this out for yourself. It's hard enough to get out of bed and make yourself a cup of tea and a piece of toast, let alone work out how to navigate this. So the NARP program grants you that as well as the healings, the coaching with the healings. It, it, it's really quite spectacular. Mm. This was fabulous. So tell us where, where do people find you? Where do people find all of this? Because this is the resources sound phenomenal, really. Yeah, look, I'd love to share that. So people can go to melanietoniaevans.com. So just my full name.com and you've got everything laid out there. I would really love you to sign up for my newsletter and then you're going to get notified. I I mean, I put out a ton of content all the time and it's all uh, information that's self-empowering to help you heal. If you are really if what I've said has resonated and you're just overripe, falling off the tree ready, looking for a solution, then I cannot recommend NARP enough. Mm. So that's melanietoniaevans.com forward slash N-A-R-P, the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program. It's fully guaranteed. There's no risk in you trying it. Mm. Um, you can trial it all sorts of things. You can pay it off monthly. It's about the cost of three counseling sessions. It's a resource for life. You never pay a monthly membership and you've always got that NARP Global Forum of coaching and support 24-7, 365 days a year for life if you wow. need it. Oh, wow. No extra fees. Any upgrades or updates that I put into NARP, you get for free for life by becoming a member. So, you know, we really make it affordable for people and no risk because we know they've had so much financial abuse in narcissistic trying to recover and they've probably spent a fortune on psychologists and all sorts of things trying to survive this and get better so we make it really affordable That's- now I also yeah thank you mm. I also want to invite people to come into my free two-part master class so they can go to it's called recover heal thrive recover heal thrive Dot com and it's a two-part masterclass that's for free and you get to experience a quantum freedom healing as well so that really explains to you NARP and what that will grant you mm. so and that's all for free that's beautiful we will put all of this in the show notes so anyone can go and find all of this beautiful information in the show notes Melanie thank you so much for being here today thank you for all you're doing in the world the world needs you 
for sure. Thank you. Well, thank you for all the work you're doing too, Michelle. And thank you for asking me to do a healing. That was fun. That was awesome. It was so fun. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. I really, truly felt a shift. No doubt about it. That was, that was amazing. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having me and lots of love to all the listeners. All right, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed the show today with Melanie Tanya Evans. I will put all of her wonderful, wonderful links right in the show notes for today. And don't forget, if you want to come join us for the last adult chair live workshop, that will be November 3rd through 5th in Nashville, Tennessee. You you can get all the details at theadultchair.com forward slash Nashville. I look forward to seeing you there. It's going to be a great, great, great three days. Have a beautiful rest of your week, everybody. I will see you next week seated right here in my adult chair.